that north would be our option at some point. But that has not happened. We are not doing that at this time either yet. So I'm sorry. So go ahead and, and kind of walk me through that again. Um, you you live on that acreage, or yes. Okay, um, but you don't own the red shaded area. You're the tenant. Farm. I am the tenant. Okay, but you are considering moving at least a portion of either the business uh, or other structures to the north. Yes, to the north fence line. Okay, um, and the phase three stops at the fence line. No, phase three stops at the south edge of my acreage. We already okay. have it all the way to our acreage. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Which we paid Thank you. for yes. to get it there. Thank you. Um, and I apologize for crying, but what was the cost to run the phase three? At the time, it was, it was uh, they put it on a 30-year payment, uh, considered it to be approximately $40,000, but they just put it on uh, our electricity bill for X amount of years, and we had to use so much electricity to make the payments. Okay. So for the for the red shaded area, um, can you detail or walk us through a description of the land, uh, including uh, tile? waterways, low-lying areas, other buried infrastructure, or overhead infrastructure. Okay. So we're going to start with tile. If you look to the uh, west side of the road, you'll see the grass waterway. So every all the water is running to that point. So Wait, you're... Hold on. Did I hit something? I don't think you did. I was going to say. There you go. Go ahead. So that's how the whole the water system runs and that's where all the tile run to is under the road right there but as far as the pipeline there is one tile that will run to the north and up along the north fence line running straight east and as you get through the hill there's a hill there right in the center of the 240s it comes back to the south but that's the only uh tile line that they will interfere with okay and to clarify you said the the, the tile will run uh, is it not in the no, there, or? no, there's tile in there. Okay, so it, it, there is tile. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, and then the sort of squiggly line uh, that I assume is a waterway, um, it, it, can you confirm for us what that terrain feature is that kind of runs from where the tile leads in on the west and then it runs uh, down to the southeast? Yes. Yeah, so let's see if this thing works. So the water comes in up here. And it runs down, you can see the black through here, and all goes this way. But there's a hill through this ground right here. So there's also a tile that runs up along here, goes right next to the fence, gets on the other side of that little block there, because this whole pocket back here has to go this way. And if you look to my neighbor to the north, you can see that line, that line, and I believe there's another line right up here next to the fence, but he's already tiled and brought that to the north that way. So we would only be interrupting one tile line there that is definitely fixable. And how deep is that tile? That tile would be approximately four feet deep unless the, uh, the ground has uh, eroded off of it. Okay, and is it uh, clay tile, modern tile? It'll be a, most likely a five or six inch cement tile. Okay, okay. Uh, and you want to see the above ground facilities there. I appreciate that. Can you give us an idea of how far those facilities are uh, from the proposed line? You mean the tile line? No, I'm sorry, from the proposed project line. Not from the tile line. From the proposed route for the pipeline. How far from, from the properties, from the structures? And we can just draw a line. That's well, probably easier. I guess I didn't understand what you're asking there. Oh, it's okay. I could have rephrased it. Okay, the shop is approximately 1,100 feet. 116. Okay, and then um, Tom's repair. Uh, what is the? Um, um, I mean, what's the general customer? How many customers per day do you see running through your property? Mm -hmm. A month. Can't, 
can't tell you. Okay. A lot. Okay. We've got uh, eight full-time techs. Okay. So go through 150 comments a year. I mean, it, it's it's really busy. So a lot in the sense that, I mean, you can't count in the sense that, you don't have a number in the sense that it's, it's a big number, not, it's just not very often. It's a big number. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, are there any other properties, or any, any other terrain features or anything else on the property, the shaded area in particular, um, that's not uh, e easily noticeable from this particular map? Okay, so the fiber optic line will run in the shoulder of the road and runs up past the, just runs the, in the right of way. There's also a rural water line that ends, Osceola Rural Water ends at our place. It is 20 feet um, into the field off the right of way. Running north and south. Uh, those would be the only two other easements that are on it. There is a um, on this part where I said that water comes along the fence in a towel. It's hard to see, but right in this area, right where the pipeline will go, that is a spot where all the water comes around this hill, and it will end up. It it cuts that out. So there's an erosion issue there that we've we've hauled topsoil after building on the home place there. Well. Several times I've hauled extra black dirt down there and just kept putting this topsoil over it so it doesn't get so bad. But I am a little concerned about the process of what they're going to do here um, and what it will do to that ground after that because you're going to open that up right where that erosion is at. So I'm a little concerned about uh, how we're going to get that ground firm back up and get the erosion not to cut way faster than it has over the last 20 years. So that's one concern of ours. So I've got many concerns. Probably one of the, the first ones is going to be safety. How will the summit uh, protect my family, uh, my employees, the customers? How will they guarantee that this won't blow? Um, it's a hazardous pipeline, and we're there working every day so how and why does summit feel they can use eminent domain to just uh, take our ground I, I don't get that for a private use company i will say and we'll get into this a little more later but they are willing to negotiate i mean they will talk to us they've we've dealt with them many times and I'll get into that a little bit more here later. Um, I don't understand why we were served eminent domain papers in July before this process has even started. Um, as a tenant, I did not get that black piece of paper that that lady had up here before, but I had a neighbor bring it to me. So I was able to read it. And I didn't do anything with it just because I'm a tenant. But my landlord has told me all along, you take care of it, um, you handle it. So we, we met with Summit. We laid everything out on the line, what we wanted, what we were thinking, um, knowing that and we, this wasn't the first time we had done this. We had done this a long time ago. We shot through the moon. We asked for, I mean, to me, the ground is priceless. But obviously after doing that nine months ago and, no response, no coming back. Uh, they kind of knew where we stood, that we weren't interested. But we also, after getting seven eminent domain papers on a Saturday and signing for them, it's like, I, I don't get this, and how does this work like this? But So we met with them before that and laid everything out, got absolutely no response for them at all. That black piece of paper, if you flip it over and you fill it out, I, I ended up filling it out two days after the deadline. And I called in after, a, I think it was around August 4th or 5th, and, and asked, I think it was Liz from Iowa Utilities Board, if there's any way that we could be part of this hearing. And it was absolutely amazing the response we got from Summit after that. I think they've been on my yard just about every day since then. So, to me, that's wrong. They did not want me here, but 
it shouldn't take coming in front of this board to get a response from them. And we weren't asking for a lot, but we'll go through some of the things that we were that we were asking. Um, insurance, having a business, um, having employees, having families, who's liable? What if something does happen? I've talked to my insurance agents this week. Nobody will comment on any of that. And I don't believe anybody's going to comment on it until there is an accident with this hazardous pipeline. Soil separation. For me, safety and soil separation and compaction are three of the most important things to this. It's not the money on the pipeline. It's not the money for my landlord on the pipeline. She said all along, take care of the ground. So we've been working very hard on the soil separation. And uh, the summit agent has been out. He's doing, he's, he's worked very hard also. Talked to the engineers with him in the pickup. I mean, he's located me, he's found me, he's, I mean, but we cannot get down to an answer on soil separation. Other people here today also talk about soil separation and how important it is. If anybody knows anything about Granville, Iowa, it's the home of black soil. So it's very good soil. But I went through the Dakota Access Pipeline on my wife's family farm. And one thing I learned from it is if it is not in writing, don't matter what you say, how you say it, what you talked about, if it's not spelled out in writing, it means nothing. And when this crew comes in to put this pipeline in, your rights are, are gone. You, you have no rights. And they say you do have rights. If it's not spelled out black and white, there are no rights. So soil separation for me is very important. We've been working on this in the last week with Summit. I got back yesterday on my chair in my office. It says organics. That's all it says. That's the first pile. What does that mean? Spell it out. I want to see it in writing. I've told my agent several times. I will go out there with an excavator, a little excavator, and I will take four places in the field. I'll tell you exactly how I want it separated. I want it in writing. So it's done right. I won't make it difficult, but it's got to be spelled out in writing. I want three layers. I want my topsoil. I want my clay loom. And then you can put the rest of the soil together. I'm fine with that. But it will be spelled out in writing. They are working on that. We just don't have the clarity that it needs to be. Digging on this ground said that we went through Dakota Access. That was an absolute nightmare. Um, in one section, I think I've seen seven of the biggest excavators come in and tear that ground up, which is also in Granville, Iowa. And to this day, and in my lifetime, that ground will never be the same. These guys are telling me that they're going to come in with a dozer and they're going to take off the topsoil. I can deal with that. Then they're telling me that they're going to come in with two trenchers. One's going to take the first, the second so line up however many inches, which I would say is going to be two feet off. And the third one's going to come in and dig the rest out to the final one and put it on the other side of the trench. But nobody will put that in writing or guarantee that that process is going to work. In my head, all I see is seven excavators compacting the heck out of my ground and tearing everything up. And don't matter whether it's wet, dry, they're going. They're going to destroy the blacktop when they drive them across the blacktop. Um, the ditches will never be the same. It just, it is what it is. And I want it in writing. I'd like to see that. But nobody will give me a straight answer on if this is how they're going to do it or not. Everybody up here is talking about compaction. What's the process going to look like? Anybody that can go on Google Earth, go over the Dakota Access line and look at the line. It is, it is very identifiable from the air. You ought to be a farmer that owns that ground drive by on the road. The technology we have in our combines today, you can't hide crop loss. It, it will spell it out on that map unbelievably. I 
can't argue with Dakota Access. I held out, and I got paid for 10 years up front. I'm not going to argue with them. 10 years is not going to cut it. We're on our seventh year. It will redline that combine every time going through there. Not only that, we were along a blacktop there also. The borehole was a huge hole. They told me then, too, they'll bring me topsoil in to replace my topsoil. Not seen it yet to this day. And we continue every year to try to get that farm leveled back out. And it's not going to happen. 20 years, we'll not cut it. In our negotiations here, they're paying us for three years. It will be in writing and who we need to talk to to get payment from then on. Because I can't put a 10-year on Because I know for a fact now, if we're going to do this process like uh, Dakota did, 10 years is not going to cut it. If they come in here with trenchers, it might make a world of difference. I don't know that. I hope we have a better process today than we had then. Um, I think it's very important that people look at the land, how they're going to, going to uh, separate the soil, and every farm is different. The man that was up here before me down by Sioux City, there's a reason there's irrigators on that farm. His soil is way different than my farm. I'm, I'm dumping tile and ground. He's dumping water and ground. So there's nobody that knows that land better than the farmer. The value of this land, for us as farmers, it's priceless. If you want a private company to put a line in, um, then you pay for it. That's what it comes down to. I mean, you got to be sensible once you're asking, but they also still need to pay it. Uh, the, the guy up here before me said, do you want a line or something running it in your backyard? What a price. He said, sleep on it. Think about it. They're doing the same thing in our land. If you'd want something run in your backyard, what kind of value would you put on it? The next thing you need to look at, if it's a hazardous pipeline, you better be thinking about what you're allowing here because it's something that you have to live with forever for yourself, your family, your kids. Once it's in, you can't change it. And if something happens, that's when people are going to start really looking at what's going on. So the value of the ground is absolutely priceless. The value of the ground don't mean as much to me as if you take the heart of this family farm out and if it isn't people own it from the United States, I sure would not want it owned by a foreign country. There is no guarantee on that either. Nobody will tell me that. You hear a lot of things. What is the truth? Why are we hiding from it? I personally feel back in July, July 17th, I believe, when we get five eminent domain envelopes. I even got eminent domain envelopes from people I don't even know. On land, I don't even know. I'm not even a tenant. And I've got an onion call. It's not my job to do their job. But when you start opening all these envelopes, it's pretty intimidating in what you're doing. And I just, I just don't feel this is the right process. I asked them to, on this particular piece of ground, on that north fence line, I've asked them for a lot of things, but we'll get, one of the things I've asked before is to flip the easement. They got a 50 foot temporary easement, they got a 50 foot uh, work easement, and they got 10 foot on the other side of the easement. I don't remember exactly how it was, but how it was laid out and the way you see it in your picture there with the negotiations we've had over the last two weeks since we filed for this to be here, we've asked them to flip that. I prefer them to put it against the pipe, against the fence line, so we don't have ground on both sides that isn't in this easement. So now it's we got 10 foot along the fence, we got a 50 foot permanent easement, and then we got a 50 foot work easement. They did do that, and I appreciate that. One of the other things I asked them to do after the Dakota access line in the bore pit, I wanted an explanation and in writing what bore pit means and how big this is. 
and they were willing to do that, and they did put it in writing. And so everybody knows here, we're along a blacktop, we're boring under the road. The bore pit is 10 feet wide, up to 8 feet deep, and 15 feet long. That is what is spelled out as a bore pit. I can live with that. On the north line here is where our main driveway is. That's where we come in and out of this field with semis. That's how we get the grain out of the field. I asked him with flipping the pipe. Sorry, Mr. 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 Kuz, the, the driveway is, is where again? On the very... The driveway is right there. Okay, so there is a driveway clear up in the, yep. the north. That's corner. the main driveway. Okay. Is where it is. You can see it there. Yep. So Thank now, you. just to get an idea in the pipeline, you got the white line there, but with them, with their negotiations, they moved this pipeline. There's 10 feet along this fence, 50 foot permanent easement, so that puts the pipeline 35 feet from the fence. So we have a rural water line running 20 feet from the grass in our field. It's 20 feet from the right of way, and they they're uh, they're allowing me 190 feet from the center of the road. So they're going from the center of the road. Here, they're going 190 feet into my field, and that's where the borehole starts. And that was done per our request to keep that hole away from the, the driveway so our semis don't drop in that hole. And I appreciate they were willing to work with us on that, and they, they were willing to do that. I have no complaints there at all on that. I think we can work around that. We know where it's at. Um, the topsoil replacement. First of all, the only place we might have problems is where that borehole is and where I said our washing problem will be. What I don't understand as a farmer, um, as a mentor to the land, where they ever think they're going to get topsoil to replace because we, I mean, you're going to have a borehole on this side, you're going to have a borehole. Where does this topsoil come from to replace this? Because that's what they told us on the Dakota Access, too, and we've, we've got nothing but a mess. We keep moving dirt from our farm, from the outside the, the easement in to get this thing after the compaction is done, get it back where it's supposed to be. Seven, eight years later, it's totally identifiable, and I don't have to explain that to you. Go to Google Maps. Follow the line. Look at every blacktop. You'll see every borehole. It is crazy. And that is exactly what you're going to see here on a Google map forever from this point forward once this line is in. So again, um, for me, they are willing to negotiate. It's not about the money, it's about the land. Uh, and I will give them credit that they're trying and they're working on it. So we will get where we need to get with this thing. But preferably for myself and my land owner, we don't want the line. But there's just things that need to be in writing for it to work. And uh, I would, I don't know what our choices are, if we can hold out. I, I don't believe eminent domain should be used. I, I believe what this company is doing right now is what needs to happen with everybody. Sit down, lay it out, negotiate it, figure it out. And they're not here to destroy the land, and we aren't here to destroy the land, and that's what needs to be worked out in this. So that's all I have. Mr. You, that, that was fantastic. I appreciate it. And now I have a lot of questions. Okay. Um, specifically, it, it, you know, when you spoke about the Dakota Access line, um, you said your combine red lines. Can you elaborate on what you mean when you say red lines? Well, it depends on how you uh, have your, your yield monitor okay. calibrated. But uh, generally, it'll be a for sure 20 bushel across the board. To, to redline it, to get it, and some of them are, are more than that, but it's identifiably, if that white line was there, it'll redline all the way across it. Okay, 
I was just I want to clarify. You're seeing when you say red line, you mean there's a deal drop. There's no not loss. actually a spike in the RPMs required to no. go through that area. Okay. No, but it, it doesn't mean that the ground isn't producing. It means it's lacking. In, okay. Um, now, it, I appreciate your description and your uh, how you elaborated on your relationship with the landlord. Uh, I think that's lost on some people that, in some cases, landlords and tenants get along very well and share, and sometimes they don't. Um, as a lawyer, it still blows my mind how many acres have no contract and just a handshake. Um, I understand. Um, the tile, the crop loss, have you discussed that with your, with your landlord? Do you, if you were to tile this, or the tile that is in there, did you pay for that? Did the landlord pay for that? The tile that is in there today, that line was put in long before I was around. All the rest of the tile that's put in that farm, I've paid for. Okay. So this is, almost, in a lot of ways, more of a partnership than, than, a, tr than a true tenant. Correct. Okay. Yes. This is a family farm. Uh, her father got me started farming. Okay. So, and it is a handshake. Gotcha. So, I, I know how that works. Okay. Um, so, I guess I should ask that. So, the tenant, is that your father-in-law? I mean, the landlord, is that your father-in-law? No. Okay. No. Okay. No relation. Okay. The, um, the driveway in the northwest corner there. Um, the, it looks like there's a parcel just north of the red shaded area. Is that the same parcel as this, or is that a different farm altogether? That's the neighbor's farm. Okay. And do you share that driveway? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, the driveway, well, I guess that's... Talk a lot about the three layers uh, of soil and making sure it's sorted properly and was returned properly. Um, have you and, I, and you touched on um, soil moisture when um, executing the project? Have you touched on um, any type of agreement as to um, what the soil moisture would be to operate and put the potential project in? We have uh, talked that over. We have nothing in writing on that. And that is not Summit's fault. That is our fault. There's some big hurdles we're trying to cross first, and then you have all the little ones that you got to get. To me, that's a little one, and we got to get through the big ones first. And once we get through them, I told them that, you know, once we got things where we as a landlord wants it and the tenant wants it, then it needs to go to our lawyers and make sure that there's, I'm not a lawyer. So that's their job to look at their, to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. Um, that is all the questions I have. It looked like Board Member Marks had one, but we're going to go to the parties and then come back. She did, as an electrical engineer, correct me and made sure that I said three. What's that? Um, let's go ahead and turn over to the parties, Mr. Taylor. I'm Wally Taylor. I represent the CR Club. Um, so how long have you been farming this land? 1992. Okay. What county is it in? Obama. Okay. It's my understanding you live in that, uh, Area of buildings that's on the map. That is correct. Are you concerned about the impact on the land from the installation and operation of the pipeline? Absolutely. I wouldn't be concerned if they could give me a positive answer of how it was going to be installed. But I, 
that's not clear. They will not guarantee anything. They'll tell me these things like the trenchers. I'm all for the trenching, but they will not guarantee it. It's a 24-inch line. Is it a 24-inch line on that property? I believe so. Are you worried about compaction and, and uh, the topsoil? It all has to do with installation. And how would they install it to do it right? Mr. Taylor, I, I appreciate your questions respectfully. Every question you just asked, except for one, has already been asked and answered. I really want to give you a chance to ask the questions that you deem necessary, but please refrain from asking questions that have already been asked. Thank you. For the record, I'm just trying to clarify some of the answers that he gave. Um, the, he said there was a hill in the center of the parcels? Yeah, slight, slight hill grade, definitely. Is, is, is that a concern at all? No, it's the only concern is the place where, where the erosion. Since you live so close to the pipeline, are you concerned about safety? Absolutely. What's your concern about that? I don't know enough about the pipeline. All you hear is uh, if something would happen, you won't have a chance. So that concerns me, especially when you're responsible for the families of all your employees, your own family, your customers. That's why I called the insurance company. Um, the last thing I want is once this goes through, not be insurable. They won't tell me anything. Would it be your preference not to have the pipeline there at all? I would rather not have it. Um, do you feel like you have no choice? I feel after July, when we got all the eminent domain papers a month before this hearing, that uh, it is being forced upon us to negotiate. Would you rather not negotiate? I would rather not negotiate at all. But after going through Dakota, I understand that if you don't negotiate and get things the way you think is the best it can possibly be, you have no choice later. That is why the eminent domain process is not an option on something that is privately owned. Negotiate it out. that the topsoil couldn't be replaced, why can't you replace it? As a farmer, we work every year to build that soil into what it is. You just can't haul that soil in. And if you do, where are you getting it from? Nobody's ever been able to tell me that. You go into my neighbor, take his soil, and put it in my field? This is Grand Isle, home of black soil. I mean, this doesn't happen. It, and even if you do haul the topsoil back in, you know how many years it's going to take you to get that soil and that organic matter in that soil to be in the condition that the rest of the soil around it was? That 120 feet or that 100 feet or 110 feet will never be the same. Right over that pipeline, whatever, however they put that pipeline in and install that pipeline, that in my lifetime and probably even my son's lifetime, we'll never see it back to where it is today. And you believe they can separate the topsoil and save it and put it back? I believe if you get it in writing, a 
what you want, I think it's doable. I, I truly believe the crews will do what they're said, but if it is not on that sheet, they're going to do exactly what that sheet is. Summit wants no differences in any of these negotiations. They want them all the same. They came out to my place two weeks ago on a Saturday and said, we got what you wanted. I read that segregation, that topsoil segregation. I said, that says nothing. That is not even close to what we're asking. And they have worked on it, and I got it back yesterday. And it's closer. We have three piles now. We just don't know the depths. But that's not all their fault because in order to get the depths, we either have to do soil testing or I need to go out there and dig and tell them what I want. And that's what I told my guy. We need measurements. Pretty simple. At this point, you're still not satisfied with with what the summit has been telling you. It's not correct yet, but they're working on it. All right, thank you. That's all the questions I have. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I know that you've talked about this the topsoil issue at length in this time that we've been up here. Have you talked about um, fixating the pipeline in a specific location on your property, i.e. removing the language and the easement that says that uh, it may differ from whatever they've told you? We, we have moved the pipeline and they were willing to flip the pipeline. I, I hear you, but have you, there's language within the easement that basically indicates that they may deviate from the location that they proposed to you. So have you addressed that issue in the easement? No, uh, but we will. Objection. Right, state your objection. Yeah, and I had hoped that after Mr. Leonard had objected yesterday and someone withdrew their complaint that we had gotten this myth out of the case, but I'm afraid it's taken out a life of its own. So. Um, that is just a pure misrepresentation of what the easement says. If we could actually move this anywhere, neither we nor board or staff would spend all the time and all the detail on the Exhibit H. It has a very specific meets and bounds description. It has a surveyed plat map. And we cannot move it once the board issues a permit and approves those Exhibit H's. That is the easement. That cannot move anywhere. And it's just pure misinformation that's being embedded in this question over and over and over. And we've heard landowners get up and say, I thought I knew where until I heard this yesterday, right? And it's actually making the case needlessly complicated because we're getting misinformation as parts of questions. I think the board knows well from past practice, it just isn't true. And the board's amendment rules would make no sense if we could just pick up the easement and move it wherever we want. So uh, I object to that misinformation as a legal conclusion being embedded in the question. Okay, thank Can you. Mr. Sorry. Sorry. Right. No, go ahead. Could I ask a clarifying question before the board rules on that? In okay. terms of the meets and bounds issue that's raised. Does your easement agreement that you are dealing with with Summit have specific meets and bounds described in it? Can't answer that correctly. Don't know. We will get there. Okay. Well, I know what I'm asking for. I know what they have on paper. The lawyers will determine that it's going to tell me exactly what I have been shown. The map is flipped. It's moved against the fence line. I'm not a lawyer. That is going to be their job to tell me that that map represents what I want. And if it does not, we go back to summit. Is it your expectation that whatever negotiation process you're entering into will have a specific route laid out? Absolutely. I get the distinct impression from, oh, before I move on, does that take care of the objection that's pending? Right. Well, I apologize. I asked that you were going to ask, ask a clarifying question no. on the rules. It's awkward. Um, no, I think we've moved on by now. Although, I will note that would have been sustained had we not moved on. So, thank you. Fair enough. I, 
I get the distinct impression from you, sir, that you see this as a bit of an inevitability, this whole process, and you're just trying to prepare for that in advance as opposed to having the board dictate to you what will happen with your property. Is that fair? That's fair. All right. No further questions. Thank you. Thank you. I inadvertently skipped over Farm Bureau because I can't see it over there. So, Mr. Meyer, Farm Bureau. Hi, Mr. Gaines. My name is David Myers. I'm an attorney with the Iowa Farm Bureau, and I'll have some questions for you. Uh, it, and I'm kind of summarizing, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but getting easement language in writing is very important to you. Correct. And you've reviewed, if I say the Exhibit H document, you, you know what I'm referring to, the eminent domain uh, outline of the proposed route with some um, easement language? Correct. And you, and so just some couple questions there. Uh, if Summit were to come, this is all under the assumption the pipeline is granted. Uh, so bear that in mind for these questions, okay? If Summit were to come back and repair the pipeline, you would want them to follow ad land restoration rules? Correct. And if Summit were to move the pipeline, you would want them to acquire a new easement? Correct. And in the easement agreement, again, if the project is granted, you would want that there to be language identifying where Summit can enter and exit your property? Correct. I believe you mentioned earlier, but can you just remind me the size of the pipe that Summit would like to install on your property? Proposed pipe is uh, 24 inches. And would you like uh, the board's order for the easement again, if granted, to identify a specific limit that someone can only install a 24 inch pipe? Yes, that's that's as big as I'd like to see. That's what they proposed. So that's what I'm restricting it to. And I know you mentioned there is kind of a hill in about the middle of the two parcels. If Summit were to change the grade when installing the pipeline, would you want Summit to consult with you before changing the grade? Correct. And are you enrolled in any crop insurance program? We are. And are you enrolled in any other federal farming programs? Not on that piece of land. And you mentioned uh, the, the proposed route is going through one people one section of tile correct and would you expect summit uh if the permit is granted and they start construction and they damage that tile they would uh, pay to repair it yes i i i want it repaired we tile ourselves i'd like to repair it myself work that out with them and let's say years down the road we have a few seasons of, of dryness and it is determined for example five years down the road that that tile was damaged would you want summit to come back in and repair it correct have you filed any objections or comments in this docket i have not and just one last question is the navigator route crossing uh, either of these two parcels no it is not Perfect. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dublinsky. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mr. Thomas. Um, just a couple things. You had expressed a, a couple concerns about the, the, the land restoration and the topsoil. Are you aware that the Utilities Board has an extensive set of rules that uh, some would have to follow in terms of how the soil is, is separated, segregated, and replaced. I am. Okay. And you know that those have been strengthened since Dakota Access went through. I would hope so. And those now require uh, a soil survey by an agronomist with multiple test points uh, on the easement across your parcel. Are you familiar with that? Yes, they offered that. Okay. Um, you said it was your in-laws parcel that had DAPL on it you what was that? My in law Did you say it was your, the, the DAPL parcel that you were familiar with? My, my wife's home farm. Okay. And 
since Dapple went in, do you know, has, uh, has that parcel been able to be insured? Yes. Oh, no further questions. Oh. Thank you. Yep. Just one quick thing. Um, can you repeat for me again what the size of that um, borehole was? So I think you said something like eight by ten by. The borehole is ten feet wide, up to eight feet deep, by fifteen feet long. Is what we we're guaranteed. Perfect. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. Thank you. Appreciate it.